I remember the exact moment when I knew I wanted to play guitar. Sat in front of the TV as a seven-year-old in 1998, watched Led Zeppelin live at Madison Square Garden. Back then I didn't have any gear. My cheap guitar and even cheaper amp was enough to keep me happy and satisfied. And I'm asking myself, can we not go back to that simplistic and happy place? What if I played something with the least amount of gear possible? How would it sound like? Let me ask you this, what was your first guitar and what was your first amp? How simple was that first rig that you started out with? Let me know in the comments. Because my rig was very very simple. I had a cheap Korean made Les Paul copy, wasn't a good guitar, wasn't overly bad, it was okay. But even worse was my first amp, it was a late 1980s Fender Hot Combo. Just one of these practice amps that don't even have a three band EQ, so it was bad, but it was also enough for me to have fun playing. I would pretty much play from the minute that I came home from school until my mom would shout, I made lasagna! And then I would play some more. And somehow that was enough to keep me satisfied, to keep the motivation going, and enough to keep the fire to stick to playing. It somehow was just enjoyable. And I think that's because things were just a little bit simpler back then. We didn't have as many options, therefore we needed to be more creative. So for instance, if I wanted to play something like this... But I wanted it to sound a little bit more aggressively, then I needed to pick more aggressively and pick more near the bridge, so it would actually sound more edgy. <laughs> And I think these were the things we found out because there was no other option to get these sounds. Instead of using a booster pedal, our hand became the booster pedal by just picking differently. Generally speaking, we didn't have the amount of options that we have today, therefore we needed to be more creative when we played. So in a nutshell, not options made us more creative, the lack thereof made us more creative, right? Fast forward to 2023 and we're faced with situations like this. So I'd love to play this Boss DD3. The problem is it's mono and not stereo. So in my wet, dry, mono stereo amp setup, it actually wouldn't work. I would have to go back to mono and then I would also have to no, this just doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, this silicon fuss face by Thorpe is great, but for the Hendrix gig I'm playing, I actually need germanium, because germanium was pretty much what Hendrix played all the time, and uh, I think it just doesn't work with this one. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to buy that $400 stereo delay panel with all the bells and whistles in it, modulation and double delays and all that stuff. Because that's just mono, that can't be good enough. Do I even have stereo cables? I think this is a mono cable, right? This, I think, I think this doesn't work. I'll probably need stereo cables too. Sweetwater, I need you. And these picks, I don't know, man. These picks, I don't know if they're even worth playing. Do these picks even have good enough tone? What are they made out of? I think I need something else with like carbon fiber or something. I'm not sure. I think these are not good. Okay, stop. Did you notice a difference here? Back when we had no gear, we were actively playing and we had to find creative solutions to make it work. But as soon as we had gear, we were talking a lot about it, we were spending loads of money, we were trying to engineer our signal path, 
we're buying pedals, we troubleshoot what's wrong, and we end up sell half of the stuff later. It's like the preface for making music becomes longer than the actual plot. Acquiring gear and planning out the gear and dreaming about gear is becoming the new playing. And of course, all of that is great too, if that's what you're after. I'm not here to tell you what to do because you can do whatever you want. My point is just all this fiddling with gear gets us further away from the original why, the big why. Why did we actually start doing this? What does really fill that creative hole that we have as musicians? Is it the gear that we acquire or is it the music that we make? How much gear is useful and beneficial for us as musicians and at what point is it just too much clutter? I think it's important to find that balance so we can be that kid in 1998 again that sits in front of the TV and just starts playing with just a guitar and a shitty amp. So how can we simplify this again and how can we fix this? From my experience there's two things we can do. First solution is for everyone who is playing in the purely digital sphere like me. So if you're playing a Kemper, a Tonex, an XFX, etc, etc, this is for you. Learn the unit that you have through and through and only rely on that unit. Over the past two years this is exactly what I have done. When I first got my Kemper my plan was to use it as just a pedal platform so I would have a lot of pedals in front of the amp, I would have some pedals in the stereo effects loop and then would use stereo effects there. But you may have guessed it, that became too complex over time. So I learned this device through and through. I use everything on this device. I even use it to down tune my guitar to C standard if I need to because that's what this thing does. And I know it might sound a little bit ironic to talk about limiting options with something like a Kemper. But the thing is, once you use it that way, all of the other stuff that you have, all the modulation pedals, all the delays and reverbs that you have, you don't need them anymore. The next thing you need to do is boil down the amount of profiles or amp models that you use to three, maximum four. Why? Because everything else is just a distraction. I remember when I first got my Kemper, the options were endless. I had a million profiles and guess what? I would use half of the time that I had to sift through profiles to find the 1% better tone. That is the exact problem with too many options. Instead, commit to the couple profiles that you have that you really, really like and go with those. And number two. If you're still playing in the analog world, narrowing down your options is a lot easier. One thing I did that really helped me is committing to one guitar, and not only one guitar, but also just one pickup. Try and play with one pickup only for the entire time that you're playing and try to get as much out of it as possible. Without stomping on like a million pedals to get different sounds, use your fingers, use a pick, use the tone knob. There's a couple things you can do. It's simplistic, but it's so fun. You know, nowadays in 2023, they say the more options you have, the more creative you can be. I say the less options you have, the more capacity you're freeing up in your brain to actually be creative in the first place. And not only will it be more fun, you're also saving a lot of money, a lot of space, and a lot of reverb fees. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.